Oh no, what have we gotten ourselves into now? We're talking about Liberty NMS high availability. So network management systems might be one of the most important tools we have as network administrators. And you know, a couple times over my career, we've actually lost access to our network management system while working some issues. And it's funny because our priority almost immediately changes from working the issue to getting the network management system back up. It's just that important. So keeping Liberty and MS working while the rest of your network is on fire is definitely going to help put out the flames. So I'll be breaking this up into a couple different videos here. Um, this one is going to be about uh, MariaDB redundancy with Galera. And then I'll be talking about uh, Nginx in another video and then Redes. I, I think it's better to kind of break these up into the individual sections because if you try to think about the whole thing as all of a whole, it gets kind of confusing and um, you don't really need to think of it like that way. You just need to think about the individual components and how they work. Um, so that's what we're going to start here. We're going to start with uh, the uh, MariaDB and uh, Galera. So before I start, I just want to say that this is brand new. In fact, if you try to do some of this right now, it won't work because I had to put a little code in and uh, put a little repool request for it and it's still out there pending. Um, so there's absolutely no documentation on this. There will be once I, the pull request goes through, but um, I wasn't even sure this was going to work when I started, and it surprisingly did very well. Um, I have a three-node system set up, as you can tell here, uh, and really the only thing I can't make working is RRD. Uh, this RRD cache D has no high availability built into it, and um, so you'd probably have to come up with some solution uh, about the files on the disk. So I'm not quite sure how you'd go about that. I haven't really looked at it too much. It might not even be possible. Um, so the bottom line is uh, you can make everything pretty much highly available except for the RRD graphs. So wherever those are, if you lose access to those graphs, uh, everything will actually still work in Libre and MS. You can actually still view the web GUI. I believe alerts and all the polling, all that stuff's still going to work. It's just that you won't be able to write any graph data or view any of the graphs in uh, Libre and MS. So it's not, it does, it's kind of unfortunate, but it's not like a, you're not going to be totally down. Uh, alerts should still work uh, and you still be able to get to everything. So uh, yeah, it's not, it's not the total end of the world, but yeah. I think the end game in order to really, really fix that is actually move away Away from RRD into one of the other time series databases, um, but that's a massive, massive undertaking uh, in Librium MS. So you can export these time series, uh, you know, status to other databases, but the web GUI in Librium MS only uses RRD, so uh, that would be breaking. So we're going to start here with MariaDB and the database. And if you're going to pick one thing to make highly available, it would definitely have to be the database. Uh, if LibreNMS loses access to the, da the database, uh, all this other stuff almost doesn't even matter because LibreNMS can't do anything without access to the database. So definitely keeping that working is the priority. Um, so to get this database spread out on more than one machine, uh, we can start to build a Galera cluster. And all that really is is taking individual MariaDB servers on these machines and letting them talk to each other. And Galera is a multi-master cluster, meaning that they all act like masters. Every single one of these uh, MariaDB servers installed on here can act like a master, read and write to it. Uh, there's really no difference. Uh, once they're in a Galera cluster, you can treat them all exactly the same. Uh, just think of them all the same server really. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start by getting these MariaDB server instances installed on these servers here. And as you can see here, I have a three-node setup here. And uh, the reason I have three nodes is um, because Galera kind of recommends that you have a minimum of three nodes if you're going to form a cluster. And that's because if two nodes ever get conflicted information, they need a third node to kind of be the tiebreaker. Uh, because when, when something gets written to the database, they all have to agree on it that this is going to be written. Uh, and if somebody objects, then they got to go through a voting process and figure out what is really going to be written. So uh, that's why they recommend to have three because then if you only have two, you could get in a situation where like, well, we don't know what to do. Um, so that's the reason for it. <laughs> uh, so anyways, uh, we're going to install, uh, and you don't have to have these, um, you don't have to have the MariaDB servers on the polars. They can really be anywhere. Uh, they can be on separate machines or on the polars or really anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so here are my three servers here. Uh, the top two already have MariaDB uh, installed on them, and this third one down here doesn't have anything done to it yet. So uh, that's what we're going to start with uh, and install this one on here. So we're just going to install like we normally would with a package manager, but we're also going to install Galera 4 with it too. Um, so you can see here uh, it's kind of cut off, but it's Galera 4 there at the end. 
So let's go ahead and install all that. And you can see here that uh, MariaDB isn't started on any of these right now. So it's, uh, it's pretty much dead everywhere. There's no database running anywhere right now. Okay, now that we have this installed, let's check it. CTL status, MariaDB. Okay, it's running, so that's good. It installed. It's not part of a cluster or anything because we haven't done it yet, but we need to tell... Well, once we get to this point, we could probably go ahead and just stop it. Because you need to start a Galera cluster a very special way. You just can't uh, let it run. Uh, so... Okay, so that's fine. So we're going to go into, uh, we're going to create the Galera config file right now. So we're going to go to etc mysql conf d. Okay. This is my Galera config file on this other server here. Uh, and it's pretty much the same. We just need to edit the node address here at the bottom here. So. So if you haven't noticed, uh, basically each one of these servers where MariaDB is installed is going to get one of these Galera config files. Uh, and most of this is going to be the same. Uh, the, the, the Most of the things you're going to have to test here are uh, this cluster addresses. These are going to be all the IP addresses of your uh, MariaDB servers. So this is 35, I believe. This is 36 and this is 37. So uh, yeah, all three are listed there. And then this will have to change per node. So this is 37 down here and we'll just call that 1.37. So we'll go ahead and save that. And I believe, yeah, it's binded to the every interface. By, if you don't have this in here, it's only going to bind, uh, MariaDB is only going to bind to the loopback address, uh, so you won't be able to access it over the network. So you need to make sure you bind it to either the actual address or just any address. So we save that, and it's probably still... Yeah, we didn't do anything, so why would it be started? So, so I'm going to go ahead and start this, just to show you what happens. Because it's not going to do anything. It's going to sit there and hang now. And that's because we have that Galera config file in there now, and it's reading that, and it wants to join a Galera cluster now. So it's going out and trying to join these IP addresses, but none of these IP addresses are responding because the MariaDB server stopped on all these. So it can't join any of these. So it's just going to sit there and try and then fail, and it's going to stop, and, and that's it. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you try this on any of them right now, it's going to do the same thing. So we need to start the Galera cluster a very special way. And that you need to do with a command called Galera new cluster. Okay, so that's how you would start it. But you need to figure out what database you're going to be using for your cluster. Uh, and, that, and that means uh, what version of the database. So if, if you don't have clustering going on right now, obviously you have LibreNMS installed somewhere with one database. And this is on that database is where you're going to run, the, run this command. Because whatever wherever you run this command on, if I run it on this server, it's going to take this database and use it for these two. So if I tried to run this command and my LibreNMS database was over here on this machine, well, guess what? It just got wiped out because I'm using the database on this machine. So you need this. This is very important. This is probably the most important thing when Galera clustering is making sure you start it correctly. So I had my LibreNMS installation on this machine and all my data was in there and everything. So I'm going to start it on this machine. Uh, so all we have to do is this. Okay, and this should have started. Okay. Cool. Uh, it started. Okay, so now we should be able to do the same command again. And it should start. And that's good. We'll start this one too. So once you start the Galera new cluster, you, you can just start these normally now. And it's kind of interesting because as long as you keep one node working, you never really have to do that Galera new cluster command again. So so these are, let me make sure. Yeah, these should be joining the cluster. Yeah, it looks like they joined. Yeah, it looks like they joined. 
Okay, cool. All right, so these all join. So now I'm gonna start. I'm gonna stop this one because this is the one I actually started the cluster with. So this is stop. We're gonna do stop, and now I can just start this normally, like I would anything else. Because now these two took over being the latest versions of the database, and now this one will join there, and uh, start looking at it. Okay. So we can verify the status of the cluster and check other statistics by logging into the database and uh, doing a couple SQL commands here. So I'm just going to log in as the uh, LibreNMS user into the database. Okay, and then I'm just going to run this SQL command. It doesn't matter which node you do this on. Well, it might matter if your nodes are not all joined. Then you might have to go and figure something out. But if they're all joined, then it doesn't matter. Um, so if you run this command on this node, this is going to tell you uh, if it's connected to the cluster. Um, and the cluster size here is three, since we have three nodes. So there's a bunch of stuff in here you can look at. I'm not going to go through it all. But uh, yeah, there's a, there's a ton of information about the cluster and its health and everything that you should be aware of that you can see. Okay, so this is all well and great. We have a working Galera cluster, and now my database is a little bit more redundant. You know, it's on multiple machines. Uh, if one of these machines goes down, I'm not totally dead. Um, but now we need to start thinking about how LibreNMS actually talks to the database. And we could figure that in a .env file here. So if we go into our main directory and do cat.env, uh, you'll see here that there's a database host entry in here. Uh, this is 1.35, and this is one of my nodes on my Galera cluster. Um, so that's all well and good. Everything's working right now as you can see I'm in the web GUI and I'm clicking on stuff and uh, everything seems to be working fine so we know this is working now I should be able to change this uh, 1.35 to 1.36 1.37 and it worked exactly the same way okay that should have been enough to kick it off and there we go we are still connected to the database so the issue with this is that whatever this is set to, if this node happens to go down, then you're done. I mean, now LibreNMS can no longer work. Uh, so let's go ahead and change this to, uh, we'll change this to dot .36. Okay, we're going to change it to 36. Okay, is everything still working? Yep, still working. Okay, uh, so now we are at dot .36, and we're going to log into 36 and kill the database here. Okay, so the database is stopped, but I'm still pointed to 36, so... See, we just clicked on something, we, we immediately died. Pretty much everything in the, you know, everything you're clicking on here is going to pull a, something from the database, so... Yeah, we're done. So now we have to go in here and edit this. Uh, to another number, you know, like 35, you know, or 37, one of the one of the other database servers that's still up. So that's kind of annoying. So um, I was digging through the Laravel code, and um, I figured out that they actually do support setting multiple IP addresses in here. Um, it just wasn't set up uh, in LibreNMS's code base yet to do that. So um, I went and put that pull request in, and I've been testing it, and it seems to work fine. So let's go ahead and uh, get that enabled here next. Okay, so to get LibreNMS talking to all the database nodes, we just need to edit some entries here in the .env file. And we're going to have to edit this .env file on every one of your pollers. Um, so you can get pretty granular, you know, they're all sharing the same database. So if you want some pollers to only talk to some nodes on the Galera cluster, you can do that. Um, so maybe they're geographically uh, closer, you know, maybe your database node and your LibreNMS polar are in the same location. You can just say, hey, only talk to this database node here. Now you're not going to get as redundant and stuff like that. But, you know, just to show you that it's it's way, way uh, granular how you can set this. And you can even set the read and the write uh, database servers in here because uh, that's kind of the way uh, Laravel kind of set it up is that you said these are going to be the database servers I write to and these are going to be the database servers I read to. Now you could put the same database server in for both for read write. So uh, let's add some of these in here right now. Okay, so you can see here I still have my db host and now you'll see here I have db host r2, r3, and 
W2 and W3. And all this is is read 2, read 3, and write 2, write 3. Uh, the second server, third server, second server writing, third server writing. Uh, and you see, I, only, I, I basically have three servers here. I have this one. This one will always read and write to the DB host. You still have to have this set uh, for some other things that broke if this wasn't set. So I decided just to keep it in there and keep it simple. But yeah, this one will always read and write to. So you should always have at least one database server that you can read and write to. You're going to need that at least. So yeah, put that in there. <laughs> um, so these are the other two database servers in here. And we also need to change this down here to MySQL cluster. Okay, save that. Okay, now I need to go edit this on my other other machine over here. And don't worry if you logged into your .env and you don't have this DB connections, it's because it defaults to MySQL, so you didn't need to put MySQL in there. I just had it because I'm going back and forth between MySQL cluster and MySQL, so... Okay, so let's save these here. And I believe my patch my patch is in both of them. This is the part that wouldn't work unless you had my pull request pulled into your code because uh that doesn't that wouldn't work. It wouldn't recognize any of those uh new entries. Libyan MS wouldn't currently. Okay, so I started MariaDB back on this server. Okay. So obviously we're clicking around on here. And we still had it set to... We had this one set to dot .35 and this one set to dot .35. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to kill the database server on 35. Bye bye. All right, it stopped, so we're still working. And just to go one step further, so. Right now we have dot thirty five down, but now I'm gonna kill dot thirty six. So only dot thirty seven will be working here, so Okay. Alright, we're still pulling stuff. Okay, so that just about does it, but I just wanted to throw a couple of uh, caveats out there that in this list here, this is not going from top down, uh, you know, just in order. It's actually going to be sending requests, read and write requests to these uh, at random. So this DB host and this and this are all the reads. So if it sends a read request, it's going to go to any of these at random and the same with the writes. So it's important to kind of keep all of your MySQL, uh, MariaDB, Galera cluster nodes all of the same performance characteristics because if one node is acting super slow and not working really well at all, that can affect the whole cluster. So you just want to keep that in mind. Just keep an eye out and make sure that none of your nodes are getting totally uh, slammed. So that just about does it here. Uh, thank you again for watching.